Rubber duckies cost a ton. For twenty dollars I just got one. Rubber duckies, are we really that fond of you? Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today's long-awaited isopod species profile is on Cubaris species rubber ducky. First I'll introduce the rubber ducky, then I'll go into the husbandry and enclosure for this species. Next, I'll discuss whether the rubber ducky is suitable as a cleanup crew member. In the final segment, we'll evaluate the rubber ducky as a display or hobby isopod. This species is a native of Thailand. It is, undeniably, a cute little isopod, but who knows if it ever would have been as popular if someone hadn't noticed the fanciful resemblance it bears to a toy rubber ducky. Orange beak, yellow face, black eyes, and even tail feathers. The rubber ducky is a smallish to medium-sized isopod. According to Oren McMonagall's book, Isopod Zoology, it reaches a maximum length of about 12 to 14 millimeters. It is very prone to conglobation, and will often remain conglobated for quite a while. There is often some confusion when it comes to morphs of this species, in part due to the naming conventions of Cubaris and similar species. White duckies, for example, are a distinct species, not a color morph of the rubber ducky. And as far as I've been able to determine, the blonde or pink duckies are simply a color variation of the rubber ducky, and will often show up in cultures of normal duckies. Dan Vivas, when I purchased my original duckies a few years ago, explained this to me and indicated that he had already been separating the stock to ensure good color contrast in his stock, and that shows up in my stock today. Before we delve into care information for rubber duckies, I want to thank my patrons at Patreon. If you haven't checked out Patreon.com yet, it is a marvelous way to support creators on YouTube and other platforms. Patreon allows me to improve the quality and scope of the videos I post. If you'd like to help me continue to improve my content for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link at the end of this video, or in the description. Now, let's talk about how to care for rubber duckies. Let me start by saying that there's some conflicting information out there when it comes to rubber ducky care, and not just from random websites. I'd like to stress that much of this conflicting information comes from respected keepers who have enjoyed long-term success with this species. Though this is not the easiest isopod for beginners, the wide variety of successful husbandry parameters leads me to believe that rubber duckies are actually quite adaptable as long as certain critical needs are met. As with almost every other isopod I keep, I offer my duckies a hydration station consisting of approximately one quarter of the enclosure occupied by a pile of damp sphagnum moss. Rubber duckies are less tolerant of dryness than some other isopods, so while I keep the moss more moist than the rest of the substrate, little if any of the rest of the enclosure is completely dry. Rubber duckies readily burrow into the substrate, so many keepers offer them substrate on the deeper side, up to six inches or more, in fact. Once I upgrade the enclosure size, I will probably increase the substrate depth for my duckies as well. Rubber duckies seem attracted to calcium sources, and apparently originate in cave systems, so some people provide them with large pieces of limestone and consider it absolutely necessary. Other respected and very successful keepers avoid limestone with this species. What's going on there? Well, one thing I can say, rubber duckies absolutely need calcium, but keep in mind that food items such as leaf litter and fish food are significant calcium sources. But back to the topic of limestone. One negative result of using large pieces of limestone with your duckies is that you could easily crush them as you're moving the limestone or just the enclosure, so it might be best to break it into smaller pieces first. Other hides, such as cork bark, can be provided as well. Provide plenty of leaf litter, of course, as you would with just about any isopod. As far as supplemental foods are concerned, duckies will take various common foods offered to isopods, but seem to be very attracted to fish-based foods, such as dried minnows and fish food pellets or flakes. They'll also eat vegetables like sweet potatoes, squash, etc. My current principal rubber ducky enclosure is a tarantula crib, which provides plenty of cross and top ventilation. Some other keepers seem to do well with much less ventilation, but one thing that all keepers seem to agree on is that the substrate must not dry out. 
Another point various keepers seem to agree on is that they try not to disturb their duckies too much. Many cubaris are a little more sensitive to being disturbed than some of their isopods, and the rubber ducky is apparently no exception. Like some other cubaris species, rubber duckies reproduce frequently once mature, but they produce small broods of offspring. They can give birth every month or two, but might only produce six or so offspring at a time, so rubber duckies could probably be characterized as moderate breeders. Perhaps not surprisingly, for such an expensive species, I do not keep this species as a cleanup crew, per se. I expect it can do a decent job in tropical humid setups, and I do have a recently started experiment going on at the moment, but until I get some clear results, I have little to report. One thing I will say is that Kyle Candillion over at roachcrossing.com has had incredible success keeping rubber duckies in with his hissing cockroaches in bioactive setups. If you'd like more information about that, you can catch the replay of our live stream conversation on the topic right up here. If you've also used rubber duckies as a cleanup crew member, please tell us your experience in the comments. Now, let's discuss the merits of the rubber ducky as a pet and display isopod. There's no denying the appeal of their cute little ducky faces. They were once the most sought-after isopod species in the hobby, and while that may no longer be true, they're still in pretty high demand. Rubber duckies are not extremely difficult to care for, but many people who have had success with other isopod species don't necessarily find rubber duckies to be as easy as some of the others. With that in mind, allow me to summarize my own experience with rubber duckies. A couple of years ago, I started out with 10 duckies of mixed sizes. Time passed, the young ones grew up just fine, and I did not experience any losses during that time. I didn't see reproduction either, though. Suddenly, I had more than half of them die within a short period of time, without really changing the husbandry that I had been following all along. At that point, I contacted Dan Vivas, the one who had sold me the uh, rubber duckies. I moved them to a smaller enclosure, which I kept a little more moist, and soon purchased a few more specimens at a local expo to add to my small group. And I noticed juveniles not long afterwards. From that point on, they've been reproducing pretty consistently, and I have a decent population of them. Soon, I upgraded them into a small tarantula cribs enclosure, where they continued to reproduce. Later, they graduated to the medium tarantula cribs enclosure that they currently live in. The population seems to be fairly dense in there now. I've moved some of them out, and I think I'll soon have to upgrade them to a larger enclosure. In retrospect, I think I was probably keeping them a touch too dry at first, and that my starting enclosure was maybe a little too big for the size of my starter colony. When isopods are too spread out in the enclosure, as Kyle mentioned in the live stream that I just referenced a short time ago, they initially divert much of their energy to growth, delaying reproduction temporarily. This can be one of the reasons starter colonies of any type of isopod can seem to take forever to start breeding. So, to sum up my rubber ducky experience, they're doing just fine now, but it took me a little while to dial into the correct husbandry. Other than the high price, which tends to remain pretty high even now, the biggest downside to rubber duckies is probably the fact that they spend a lot of the time under the substrate and tend to be nocturnal, so you won't see as much of them as you would many bolder isopod species. When I look into my enclosure during the daytime, I can usually see one or two in the moss, or maybe in a small chamber under the substrate, up against the acrylic, but if I want to see them moving around in any numbers, I generally have to come check on them after dark. Once my culture is really large, I assume they will be much more visible, but I don't really recommend this species if you want a really active isopod. In conclusion, rubber duckies are undeniably cute, fairly expensive, neither extremely difficult nor extremely easy to care for, and pretty shy. I hope you're enjoying these isopod species profiles. I'm steadily adding more videos to the playlist. Which species would you like me to add next? Please give me your suggestions down in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with Wednesday live streams, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for notifications all so you don't miss my next video.